On this episode, we'll talk about whether or not agents can be successful if you're an introvert. Do you need to be an agent that can just talk to anyone, run up to any stranger on the street, start a conversation? Do you need to be super outgoing and charismatic? Or can you be an introvert and still be successful as a real estate agent? Today, we're talking with Megan Riker from the Space Coast in Florida about this. And she's she's had some success in her career as an introvert. I think you guys will find this quite interesting. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 228 of the Massive Agent Podcast. I am your host, Dustin Brome. Today, we are having an interesting conversation about personality types. Do you need to be a people person? Do you need to be outgoing and charismatic and love being the center of attention and all that shit? Well, hopefully not, because I'm not that way, okay? I've been able to have some success uh, by being an introvert, okay? Now, what's crazy is, uh, I mean, there's some stats out there that show that the majority of successful people in in the country are actually introverts. Pretty crazy. I would not have thought that, um, but it's true. So when you're listening to this, think about, are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? Or do you have traits of both? A lot of agents have traits of both. But if you're somebody like me, that you go to a networking event and after an hour or so, you just kind of hit your your limit and you're like, I just want to go to a quiet place. I want to lay down. I just want to be around nobody and, and have silence. That's me. You can absolutely, <clears throat> spoiler alert, you can absolutely be successful as a real estate agent while being an introvert. We're going to be talking with an agent who is, and she has some really interesting takes on what being an introvert means to her and, and what, you know, how she's able to, tailor her business and her marketing because of that. Like she leans into her, she's been very self-aware. She's leaning into her strengths and weaknesses, which is something we all really need to strive to do. So um, we're having Megan Riker on the show. She's a, a realtor with EXP Realty down in Space Coast, the Space Coast of Florida. And that's where they launch all the rockets. Okay, That's where the, they used to launch the space shuttle back when we had a space shuttle. Remember those days? Yeah. Not even that long ago. So she's... um. Very interesting conversation. She's actually a member of the Massive Agent Society as well, and I've been able to watch her grow and flourish and really come out of her shell over the last few months as being part of the program, which has been awesome. So let's get into this super interesting conversation. Can you succeed as a real estate agent and be an introvert? Let's talk to Megan right now. What's up, guys? I'm here with Megan Riker, a realtor in the Space Coast of Florida. Megan, welcome to the Massive Agent Podcast. How's it going? It's great. Thanks for having me. This is a true honor to be on your podcast for sure. Absolutely. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, we, we're having an interesting conversation before we started recording, and it's the same conversation we had um, you know, when we talked about you coming on the show, being an introvert versus an extrovert. And I feel like there's a lot of a lot of agents in our industry feel like they're at a disadvantage if they're an introvert. And you know, you you've been successful. You're you're, you know, growing. Um, you're not an, you're not an extrovert. I'm not, I'm a, I'm an introvert. Far I'd rather, it. yeah, the, the big social <laughs> gatherings and stuff. I'd rather not, uh, not yeah. go to, you know, but here we are. So, um, before we get into that, which by the way, this episode is going to give a lot of relief to people that there's going to be a lot of people giving themselves permission all of a sudden to be like, Oh, I, I can be successful. A lot of excuses are going to be taken away for some people which is good. Um, yeah, but Megan, how long have you been selling real estate? Um, I'm going into my fifth year. Uh, prior to that, I did insurance. I did that for 17 years. So I've kind of been in oh. sales kind of my whole career. <laughs> what kind of insurance? Life? Um, I did everything. I did home, life, auto. Um, I was always kind of top sales uh, in that business. And it was more of a relationship type business. I built it mm -hmm. through relationships. In fact, I still have clients that I'm working with today that were my insurance clients from 15 years ago. So it's a relationship that's awesome. business for sure. Well, and that's a good warm up for getting into real estate, right? It's mm -hmm. probably helped yeah. you a lot. Oh yeah, absolutely. For sure. Oh, cool. And uh, so Space Coast of Florida, that's where uh, they do like the, when they have the space shuttle, the space shuttle launches and SpaceX launches and all that, right? Yeah, I tell people I'm from Cocoa Beach, I'm, you know, Melbourne, and they're like, where? And I'm like, where they launched the rockets? They're like, oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, we have 
we have Elon Musk here. We have Jeff Bezos. We have some of the top two richest people in the world with their businesses here. So um, our community is thriving. We have a lot of growth here. Things have not slowed down due to interest rates and all the, the talk that's going around. So, um, so yeah, that's where we're at over here on the East Coast. If you take the, um, if you land in Orlando, I say go east until you can't go any further. That's where I'm at. And about how far is it from Orlando? 30 minutes door to door. Oh, that okay. Cool. With me so driving. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so probably like an hour for most. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll be in Orlando in June for the the big EXP shareholder event. So, okay, um, yeah. I was always wondering, like, how close is the beach? And I thought it was like it's, an hour, hour and a half. My husband works. He he flies in and out of the airport, and it's thirty minutes door to door from our house. So it's not bad. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Maybe I'll have to venture out that way and, and check it out. And I'm For thinking sure. to bring in the family in July or August as well. You should. It's... it's absolutely beautiful here. I can show you some of the best spots for sure. Awesome. So Megan, what for anyone who's like, okay, I keep hearing about introvert, extrovert. What the hell's the difference? What is the difference? What, what, what do they mean in your, in your eyes? What's the definition? In my eyes, that's great that you asked that because I don't know the formal definition. I've not looked up the definition, but I can tell you from my definition, it means it's just an energy bank. You know, we have an energy bank. Mm. And so for introverts, when we have interactions with people, they take withdrawals from our energy bank. And so I'm constantly looking at how I can make deposits to my energy bank. That's, that's how I look at it. We're all big, one big energy bank. Some things rob us of our energy, some things fill us up. And that's, that's really what it boils down to. So introverts, the more time they spend with people in large groups, networking, I mean, all of that kind of stuff. It just drains, drains our energy. For sure. Yes. It's like I feel this. So I, I know I'm, I'm certainly an introvert. That's a great definition. Like that's some deep shit. I like yeah. that. And so extroverts would be opposite, right? Like they, they gain energy. They thrive in those social situations, right? Yeah. My best friend, who's actually a real estate agent too. I don't know how we get along so well, but she is the biggest introvert ever. And she just gets so much energy and renewal from being around people. And I am the complete opposite. So it's, I, I don't know, we're best friends, but it's awesome. It's neat to see the differences for sure. You're, you're like, could you tone it down for a minute so we can have our, our lunch please. And she already just, knows better. She knows not to get, yeah. to get wild with me. <laughs> like, that, that's funny. I'm her Zen time. <laughs> I have a couple friends that are, super extroverts too. And in high school, I just thought it was a confidence thing. Yeah. Like I, I used to think that I just lacked all this confidence because I couldn't do that. And I thought that that's what you needed to do. And it wasn't until I really started diving into self, uh, personal development and learning that, no, like you can actually be quite successful as an introvert. Mm -hmm. You found that to be the case, you know, you're, you're growing and you know, you're, do you consider yourself new in real estate still at five years? I mean, I still D depends on the day, depends I, on the deal, it depends on the day. Um, yeah. I have a lot of people that come to me because when I worked in insurance, I, you know, I took it very seriously that like somebody's liability, you know what I mean? Like somebody's livelihood. If, if I do something wrong, it could cost them a lot of money. So the way I look in real estate is, you know, there's two things I'm not going to chance and that's my license and your money. And so I just approach it from a very, um, very thorough background. And so, yeah, I think, you know, I don't want to say no, but I mean, I have a lot of people that come to me and ask me questions. And if I don't know, I'm going to go to somebody. So I'll be flat out honest with somebody. I, I don't know. I will find you the answer though. Um, but I guess to give you an answer, I guess, yeah, I guess I still feel kind of new. Um, I think that's good. I, yeah. I mean, there's, there's nothing worse than one of these 20 year veteran douchebags that think they know <laughs> everything and they tell you that they're a 20 year veteran. That's how well, you know. Let me they're... just tell you, I've been in this business for 20 yeah. years. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so they know everything and yeah, they're yeah. exhausting. And usually they know the least or it's just outdated. Right. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, I digress. So yeah. tell me more about, uh, about being an introvert. Like you, you said you had some data around, you know, being successful um, as an introvert. I think a lot of people think that that's uncommon that, that maybe the six, those who are financially successful in business, um, who are also introverts are the exception to the rule, but is that even the case? No, it's, it's totally not. And I, I, I will tell you this, um, you know, I mean, I can go, I have some notes here. I, I can dive right in. So if you want me to dive, dive right in, 
I'll, I'll go right in. Let's um, dive. The way the way I look at it is, and I, and I've joined your coaching group, right? I, I really have found um, success in that as far as not using being an introvert as an excuse to do mm. certain things. So I've come out of my shell a lot from being in your group. And by that, I mean the video on social media, for example, I used to get like the sweats and like yes. my mouth was cotton and it's like, I'd freeze up and I'd re-record it like 5,000 times. And you know, you're like, you're like the kick in the ass that I needed <laughs> to do that. <laughs> So Good. now I do videos like it's second nature. Like it's, it's like, I just flick on the record and I'm like, Hey guys, I'm, I'm here at this house. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing all these videos and I'm not doing a ton. Like I, I need to do more, right? We always can grow, but I feel like I've, I've had some growth just since joining your group. And so I've kicked that excuse, you know, the video excuse, right? Um, I can tell you there are a couple of things I will never do in this business. I will never cold call. I will never door knock. I did it once and I, it was the most draining thing for me. Um, it was an open house. So at least it was a, a listing. I wasn't trying to get somebody's business, but um, I, those are just things I will never do. I never had to do them mm. in insurance and I was very successful at what I did. Um, I will never do them. So, uh, you know, while I am growing in video, I'm growing towards things that actually fill my bank and give me joy and give me energy. So those are the things that I'm focusing on. So I have some pillars of notes. And one of the pillars is figuring out what lead generation fills your bucket, fills your energy, fills your bank, whatever you want to call it. Um, so for me, the number one is social media. I got all of my business. I would say 95% of my business off of social media last year. The nice. other 5% would have been, you know, people who know me or referrals or family, um, hundred percent off social media. Um, and then my That's second great. bucket would be like sphere, your sphere and referrals. And then my third bucket would be farming. So farming is something I'm trying to get into because I'm trying to stay ahead of the market curve. If we have a correction or if we have anything that changes in the market, I'm trying to get ahead of that. So farming is kind of on my list right now of, diving in and investing a lot of money in. Um, so I think it's just some of it might be excuses. Like we, we use being an introvert as, you know, a way of staying in our comfort zone. It's like, I'm an introvert. I'm not going to do video. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. But um, just seeing the growth in the video aspect has definitely made me want to explore other avenues, not the cold calling and not the door knocking and definitely not networking events. I will do conventions. I like events. I like things that are self growth. Um, but just random, Hey, meet for happy hour so you can network. No, that's not my highest and best use of time. I, I just, I don't get anything from it. So, <laughs> yes. Well, and you, but, uh, you mentioned social, like you've, you've really thrived with social. I, a lot of people, like you said, they use being an introvert as an excuse why they can't or why they don't. Mm -hmm. I can't think of a better tool for an introvert than social media. You can reach thousands, tens of thousands, millions of people, literally, mm -hmm. without ever having to talk to somebody face-to-face. -face. Like, is there a better tool for an introvert? You don't ever have to talk to anyone but this lens in front of you, and yeah. you can still reach millions of people potentially. That's powerful shit. And, I mean, you got 95% of your business from social, so it obviously works. What are you – when you first became an agent – or, or Let's back up. How did you did, talk to me about your um, your progression of, you know, getting comfortable and, you know, what was originally like your what was hard for you about social? And then what have you learned along the way? Let's go. Let's go with that. Well, what was hard for me was the content and trying to figure out what people wanted to see. Yeah. And I would post things that I wanted people to see. Mm -hmm. And then I started figuring out, of course, from your coaching group, we talked about things that other, you know, you have to kind of step out of your own zone and put yourself in a buyer or a seller shoes or whatever, whoever your ideal client is, put yourself in their shoes and what they would want to see. Um, and so I just started doing that and then having fun with the content and throwing everything in the air and saying, screw it. I don't really care what people think about me. I'm tired of figuring, you know, are they going to judge me because I'm not, I don't sound right. Or I don't, you know, I don't have a filter or whatever, you know, I just got tired of that. And I threw caution to the wind. Um, I do subscribe to a content platform that does help me. They, 
they aid in my, I don't, I don't get all of it from there, but they just kind of aid me. They give me guides, they give me captions, templates. It's, it's a lot of stuff. Um, and it nice. has been really helpful. In fact, I started it during COVID. So when COVID, you know, beginning of 2020, when there was this like weird lull in the market, we didn't know what was going on. I spent like probably three months and hit it heavy. I was posting every day. I didn't do a ton of video. I was on stories and I just, Honestly, I know this is being a dead horse and I know we talk about this, but consistency is the most powerful thing you can do in your business. I don't care if you choose to door knock. I don't care what your lead gen is. If you stay consistent at it, you're eventually going to get results. I mean, it's a numbers game. So um, that's what I did with social media. It took me about three to four months until I started getting, I got my first message and they're like, hey, we're relocating to the area. We'd really like to talk to you about buying a home. And I was like, Oh, Sweet. okay. Well, that's cool. Let's set up a buyer's console. And so, um, you know, one of the biggest mistakes I made in my business, which has helped me with being an introvert, because I think a lot of real estate agents, we, we just wing it every day, right? You know, we wake up, we're like, oh, what do we do today? You know, it's like, oh, I got to, I got to do this. A lot of people just wing it. And I, I, building systems in my business really helped me because I'm like, I'm focused. I know there's a system, there's a plan and it's not, you're not just winging it. So, um, you know, setting up a system and having a place for your lead to go, giving them call to actions, things to do, putting them in a workflow, an email workflow and warming them up to work with you um, are some of the tools that I've used on social media. I know this wasn't supposed to be a social media call, but <laughs> I feel like it, it kind of, it kind of all goes together. You know, we're kind of giving everybody a bonus today, but it, it does all go together. Exactly. I mean, if we only talk about the definition of introvert, extrovert the whole time, yeah. it's going to be a short, short episode and it's boring as shit. Giving yeah. context is what matters. Yeah. And, you know, you are an introvert and you're using that as your, your superpower, so to speak, by using social the way you're using it. So um, there's a, there's just so many agents out there that are still looking at it as an excuse. And I get it. I get it. it you know, if you have a mentor when you first get into the business who's an extrovert like I did, he thrived off cold calling, door knocking, you know, walking into the grocery store with his stupid name tag on and, and chatting people up. He wanted to go sit at Starbucks. Yeah. He wanted to go sit at Starbucks. And, and I remember him teaching me that you need to strategically position yourself where everyone has to walk by you and you, you put some like real estate bullshit on your laptop, uh, you know, like a sticker or something. Mm -hmm. And that was his deal. I have that, but I don't use it. <laughs> right, because it's weird, right? It is weird. Yeah, it's, it's inorganic, like... and that's yes. That for me is how I try to get all of my legion. Because if somebody comes to my door right now and they were to knock on my door, I'm automatically on the defense. I'm automatically. Right. I don't want to talk to you. I don't care if you're unless you're selling Girl Scout cookies. That's the only people I want to talk to. But. I just, I'm automatically on the defense. When somebody who calls me, I don't know who it is. I'm automatically on the defense. And that's just to me, so inorganic. It may work for people who are extroverted and they're good at making a conversation. But for me, I would just stumble and just, oh, I'm sorry, I bothered you. Like, have a good day. And it would just be a big waste of time. I could use my time so much better in so many better ways. And so, yeah, I get it. I know social media is not for everybody. It wasn't for me in the beginning, though. I, di I didn't love it. And some days I even struggle with it because I feel like, you know, we're on it all the time and it can kind of affect your mental health. But I've set boundaries and limits. I schedule things out. I um, I don't let myself be on for hours at a time scrolling and, you know, commenting and all that stuff. But um, I think setting boundaries and just, you know, playing around with it and seeing what, you know, finding what you, what's your thing? Like, what do you love? You know, some agents, we have Ryan in our group who he loves motorcycles and he likes, you know, he's architectural design. It's like, make that into your business, find a niche, find something that you love to do. And it will come so much easier to you. You can't just be the jack of all trades and just kind of, you know, winging it, so to speak, I guess. <laughs> Intentionality is so key in all aspects of life and business. It really is like, Look, there's nothing wrong with sitting on the couch at night after a long day and just scrolling through your feed for an yeah. hour. Yeah. But it's also a missed opportunity if you're not intentionally trying to learn something or get inspiration or, you know, if you're looking for, hey, what do I post tomorrow? You know, what, which video should I do tomorrow? What should I talk about on my stories or on TikTok? And you don't have a clue. Well, scroll through your phone, look at what other people are talking about and take inspiration from it and you know, put your own spin on it. That's all I do. 
That's all anyone successful on social that's does. What I do. I mean, I literally yeah. just scroll through reels and I save save like three or four that I'm like, okay, that'll be good for this week. I like it. Love the background. I liked yours that you did the other day. <laughs> I felt like that was just <laughs> made me crack up so much. I'm oh, like the Dumb and Dumber clip. It. Yes. Yes, I, I, I enjoyed I doing that one. Like a hundred times. I'm like, this is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I, I got it. I got the idea from Paige Steckling on TikTok. <laughs> I saw Paige do it on TikTok, and she she did it so well, and I'm like, oh, I got to do this shit. But so it's so true and it's so relatable. And I think buyers and sellers are like, oh my God, that's so true. So like finding the like humor and the relatable content, I think is super huge, but, but yeah. T totally. Um, who, did you have mentors when you got into the business? Not really. Um, you know, just being really raw and honest with you. I'm a very independent person. I'm a very, uh, I will figure it out myself kind of person. I didn't think that I needed anybody. I did hire a good friend down in Boca. Her name is Jessica Baskey's um, Lifestyle by Real Estate. She's an EXP agent down there. And I did hire her because I was so new to the business that I just wanted to have just a little something, right? And she helped teach me that you need to have a niche and it won't it won't narrow down your prospects. It's not like if like my niche is relocating people and also buying and selling simultaneously. I feel like that's primarily what I do. Um, and so I've gotten really good at it and I've gotten to the point where I'm very confident in marketing that. And so it's not going to eliminate listings. It's not going to eliminate other people. It just makes you the expert in something and something that will gravitate people towards you. Um, and you so focus that all help. your marketing efforts in one area, in one exactly. direction. Exactly. And that's, if you want all listings, then focus your marketing on listings. Um, but you know, right now buyers obviously are the low hanging fruit. I hopefully that'll change soon. <laughs> um, yes. but yeah, so I just, I don't know. That's, that's pretty much what I do. <laughs> that's good. I mean, yeah. it's a hack. It's a, it's a cheat code to be able to reach out to somebody and look, you don't have to pay somebody to mentor you, to be a coach, you know, to now, if you're going to take their course or something, obviously, yes. Uh, but if you can listen to somebody's podcast, somebody that is at a certain level you want to be at, and they're just telling you how they did it and you can listen to their podcast, that mentorship can be a one-way thing. Mm -hmm. And for introverts, especially like you need to have coaches and mentors, because if you're an introvert, you're like you and like me, you're going to be sitting over in your corner head down, doing your thing your way. You're not mm -hmm. going to be out and about, you know, shaking hands and kissing babies. That, yep. That's what my extrovert mentor did back in the day, you know, so to speak. He wasn't literally kissing babies, but he he's not above it either. Anyways. Yeah, not um, these days, right? <laughs> right. Yes. She's, um, it's, such a, it's such a cheat code. It is. And you know what? Not to, I, I feel like I didn't finish answering a question because um, I, my mind, it's like, you know, the squirrel moment. We have squirrel moments. I mean, that's just. Um, yes, we do. Yes, we but do. But hiring a coach, I think is super important. And that is one of, I made a few mistakes. Well, I've made many mistakes, but some of the top mistakes I made in my business was not hiring a coach sooner. And then also like interviewing coaches to make sure they fit your personality. So like with you, mm. I was binging your podcast and I was listening to every episode and I really like, I liked your style. It's raw. It's real. There's no BS. You're just like, shoot it straight. And that's what I need. I don't need hold my hand nice and fluffy. I need like, like I need raw, real, like don't sugarcoat it. Don't hold my hand and be like, it's going to be okay. Like I need you to like kick my ass and tell me what I'm doing wrong. And so that's what I loved about your podcast. And so that's why I joined your coaching group. But I think it's important to connect with somebody who, you know, like, if, like you said, yours was an extrovert and, you know, sometimes being opposites can help in some ways, but if they expect you to do everything that they do that was successful, that could be a total bomb, uh, a waste of money. Um, so I definitely think that making sure your personalities jive. Um, my second mistake in my business was not hiring people sooner. I was the mm. stubborn one that wanted to do all of my paperwork because I was very OCD. I wanted it done a certain way. And so I hired a TC in January of this year, you know, thanks to your coaching group. And nice. it has been the best thing in the world for my business. I mean, I'm already seeing, like, I'm just happier. I'm, I feel like I'm growing. I'm, I'm like the rabbit in the race here or the, the turtle. I'm like slow. I'm going to win. I'm there, but I'm like, I'm the slow growth. Um, but I feel like that was just one thing that kind of leaped me into the next realm of growing my business. 
Um, but yeah, definitely hiring people out is a huge, if you don't, if you wait till year four or five, you're missing out on so much potential growth. Absolutely. You don't make any money from doing your own contracts and look, Mm -mm. a TC does it better anyways. Like Mm -hmm. they, they know this stuff intimately because that's all they do. So why are you beating your head against the wall, trying to save a couple hundred bucks and wasting so much time and mental energy? It's, it's not, I mean the time, yes, but the mental energy that, that you have to distract yourself with to make sure all the T's are crossed, the I's are dotted. Oh, did I get this disclosure? Did I get this addenda Mm -hmm. or addendum? You know, all that crap. It just, it's unnecessary. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that you've, you know, you finally gave in and you're like, oh, that's why everyone has one. That's why all the successful agents have TCs. That's why all the high producing. Yeah, exactly. I know. And luckily she is a friend of mine that used to work with me in insurance. So she knows my personality. She knows my style. So it, it just, it's a great relationship. It works really good. That's but, awesome. Um, yeah. Me- Megan, being an introvert, is there any, has it held you back at all? Is there any, any negatives to it? And you know, what, what's the, what's the negative? Like what, what's the, on the, the con side of the list to being an introvert I in your eyes? I personally don't see any cons. I love it because I feel like introverts are more in tuned with people. And I'm not saying that extroverts can't be, but extroverts are very high energy. They're just very like, go, 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 go. And they're just, you know, introverts are a little bit more slower. We process things slower. We, I don't know, me personally, I'm just in tuned with people more. So I feel like that helps me with, um, relationships a little bit better. I'm very sensitive to people. I can read them a little bit easier. Um, so, um, I think it helps with building those long-term relationships, which helps bring back repeat business. So for me in this business, highest and best use of time is my motto, highest and best use of time, cold calling and door knocking for me. I could spend eight hours doing it and maybe get one lead. Whereas I could spend eight hours, uh, you know, Instagram, reaching out to people, making new connections or, um, focusing on past clients or farming, which I think in my opinion is highest and best use of time. Oh, a thousand yeah. percent. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Imagine it, people that still aren't using social media for their business. It's, it's Close like not using the internet when the internet first, you know, became available. It's like, like, like no, I don't really need that thing. It, yeah. what the hell? And it, it's because people are scared. They're nervous and, have, and go ahead. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, You're good. I have a buyer that actually I got from social media and she was working previously with another agent. And I said, well, you know, I just want to make sure like you don't have that relationship anymore. Like what's the deal? And she says, no, I didn't really spend much time with them, but she's three hours away. And she said that he was older school and he did not believe in video. He said, nope, you're going to have to just drive over here and see the house. And she said, dude, I'm three hours away with two kids. Like I can't drive over twice a week just to go see a house. So because he was against doing video tours and not willing to progress with what the times are demanding, he lost out on a buyer. And, you know, that was my gain. Luckily I gained it, but I mean, I hate to see that, but at the same time, it's like the reality of the business. If you don't progress and do, you you know, social media and stuff like that, you're going to be left behind, even in an old school world, because eventually the old school people who like those ways it's progressively going to be something that dies down. I'm not going to say it's completely going to die away, but the majority of people are shopping online. It's the reality of it. So it, that's the reality today. And you know, <laughs> two years from now, five years from now, I can't even imagine how much further along we'll be down this trend and what it'll, it'll look like. Like, yeah, if if you're not on social media, you don't exist. Yeah. You, you, the only reason some of these giant teams can do so many deals and not have a social media presence is they've built that up for so long and they have, they spend tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands a month on lead gen. So they they're paying for that. How awesome is it, Megan, that you don't have to pay for shit. I mean, maybe you boost a, you know, run a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad or something every once in a while, but you do a real Zero times. Have I done that? I have never awesome. ran an ad. I've, I, like I said, I've never cold called. I've never ran an ad. I would love to get into that. Um, I know you teach a lot of that. I've never door knocked. I've never done any of that. And I, I know we did one of our coaching calls about our hourly rate and how we spend our time. And, and for me, it's like, yeah, I could, I could spend thousands of dollars on Zillow leads. I could send thousands of dollars on Mart mailings and, and get my name out there. But why? Social media is free. 
Why mm-hmm. would you do that when you don't have to? It may take a little bit more time, but you know, I mean, free versus 20,000 a month on Zillow leads. I mean, and you know, you got to think about this. A lot of times what we suffer from, and I know for me, and maybe introverts and extroverts, we have the comparison syndrome, right? We see all these agents on Instagram. We're like, I, how are they freaking doing this? And you get so down on yourself, but you have to ask yourself, what, what do they do to get there? Are they paying 20,000 a month in Zillow leads? I know agents in my area that pay well over that for Zillow leads and they yep. close maybe five to 10 deals a month, which is great. But what are you netting? What what are you netting? Like, what is your hourly invested? What is your marketing budget invested? And what are you netting? I feel like for social media and what I do, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a pretty good time versus money thing. So you just have to figure out what you want to spend your time doing. Do you want to exhaust yourself and your budget, you know, just to get the quick, the instant relief? Or are you in it for the long haul, you know? Right. So. Yeah, that's a good point. It's a good point. And look, I have friends that run giant teams that spend a bunch of money every month. Cool. That's awesome. They also can't stop. Like mm-hmm. they, they have to keep going and mm-hmm. cool. Um, you could also do social media on top of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of them don't, or they, they don't do it right. Um, cause they're just really good at th- the numbers game. Awesome. But like you said, you could do a reel that reaches 8,000 people. And, you know, you get three people reaching out saying, hey, Megan, I like your style. I like your personality. You just taught me something or you made me laugh. You entertained me. We actually need to buy a house or we're thinking about selling our house. What are those conversations like when you do get business from social? How do they go? Like, what what are some of the most common things people are saying of why they're hiring you from your social media? So a lot of times, in fact, I actually was going to do a reel on this the other day. I screenshot probably 30 conversations of the very first message that somebody sent me when they reached out to me, just as proof that social media works. So I screenshot all of those. I'm going to figure out a reel to do with it. But basically the way the conversation goes is they just go right into it. They say, Hey, my husband and I are thinking about relocating to the area. Uh, you know, we see that you're on social media. A lot of times what people say is we've been watching you for a while and I wanted to reach out to you. So a lot of times people are watching you and they're not saying anything. They're not messaging you. They're not even liking or commenting. They just, right. they follow you and they're, you know, and that's what you have to realize is when I first started in social, it's like, I had five likes. It was like my mom, my husband, and like two friends and like maybe two other agents. It's like, this is, where is this going? Right. Right. But what you don't understand is there's a lot going on in the background that you don't know. There's a lot of people that see you every day that you don't know. They're liking your content. They, you don't know. And so you have to show up consistently. It's like a brick and mortar business. You know, when you go to a business, you somebody who's reliable, they're open every day. They're there. They show their face. They're consistently giving you value. That's the same thing as social media. Showing up at a brick and mortar is showing up on your Facebook So if you or your Instagram. So if you don't show up for three weeks, people are like, what happened? Like, what, is she not consistent? Is she not full-time? So if you're not showing up consistently, people won't think you're a full-time agent and they may not want to work with you if that's not your priority. So, um, you know, again, I know we're hitting a lot on social media tips, but it just kind of like all goes together of how to spend your time and your energy so you can conserve your energy. As introverts, we are constantly look. I am trying to figure out how to conserve my energy. And a lot of that is setting st- setting up systems to where business comes back to me and I don't have to spend this high amount of time in the beginning that I'm doing long-term. I can set it up to kind of be on automation. Um, And so some of that is our content. It lives forever. Reels, so people can go back and scroll those and they live forever. You know, stories only last so long unless they're in your highlights, but reels, it's where it's at. People can get to know your personality. If you're goofy and you're funny, you make jokes, um, or if you're serious or whatever it may be. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where it's so, at. <laughs> Megan, if it wasn't for social media, if you didn't have social, do you think you'd still be in real estate five years in? Um, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I, I think this is, it's a tough business for introverts. If you don't have social media, I really do. I think that, um, what I've tried to do is because of that time, Instagram shut down for like a day and everybody lost their mind. Yep. I have now implemented a system of trying to capture emails and I try to keep up with people through newsletters and, and stuff like that. I try to capture emails. Um, but there's, I, I don't know. I, I don't know, honestly, if I would be doing this business because I, I need to do something that I'm not, 
actively like door knocking, cold calling, any of that kind of stuff. Like when I worked in insurance, I was behind a phone. People called me and they needed my help. So they came to me. I didn't have to go seek out business. Um, So, yeah. Awesome. Well, Megan, this has been super enlightening. And, you know, like I said before, you're some some people listening are going to feel uncomfortable because you just completely removed the excuse that they've been latching onto and leaning on that's been keeping them from doing all of this stuff. And now, now that's gone. Like you, you can't use this anymore. Um, and didn't, didn't you tell me that like, uh, of the most successful people in the world, like the majority are introverts, like you had a stat yeah. around that, right? Yeah. The stat is 98% of billionaires are introverted. And I 98? don't know if that, yeah, ninety eight percent of billionaires are introverted, and I don't know if that's maybe, you know, they like to spend a lot of. Because for me, when I spend time alone, for in, for instance, I walk along the river and I listen to podcasts. I feel like when I'm alone is my most creative time. It's when I come up with all of my ideas. I'm like the energy's flowing, the ideas are flowing. So I'm like got my notes. I'm listening to podcasts and I'm walking down the road trying to not get hit by a car. Um, but I (laughs) just, I feel really creative when I'm by myself. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Um, but yeah, 98% of billionaires with a B as in Bravo are introverted. That's crazy. I wouldn't have thought that, but I mean, that makes sense that, so guys, no excuses, seriously, you know, introvert. Awesome. And Like like you said, another benefit to being an introvert in this business is that People who buy leads and they door knock and they cold call, the moment they stop doing that, their business literally shuts off. You know what I mean? The relationships in the long term is where it's at, in my opinion. So if if an extrovert can build relationships at the same time as, you know, they're doing all that busy work and all those people, all that turnover, great, then you're going to have return business. But for introverts, I know we focus a lot on relationships. And so having that long term business, um, it can be a benefit. (laughs) to introvert. So great point. Thousand percent. But Megan, before we wrap it up and let everyone know where, where to follow you and find you and uh, connect with you, we do these rapid fire questions with every guest, either, or pick one or the other. You can elaborate if you choose to, but you certainly don't have to. And then at the end, we'll um, let you tell everyone where to, where they can find you ready, ready for the rapid fire. I'm ready. All right. Facebook or Instagram, Instagram, a thousand percent Instagram or TikTok. Instagram. Okay. Um, I'm going to throw another one in here. Instagram or podcasts. Hmm. Well, I get all my business from Instagram, but I get all my knowledge from podcasts. So if I'm getting business, it's Instagram. (laughs) Love it. Love it. Um, Podcasts or audiobooks. Podcasts. Rental property or flipping. Rental property. Nice. Burgers or pizza. Uh, Burgers. For sure. New York or LA? Oh man, really neither one. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Listen, I'm from the South. We like the beaches. I don't know. Um, I would definitely have to say, I don't know. That's a tough one. I've never been to LA, so I can't really down it. I just, I have in my head what it's like based off movies and stuff like that. And it's just not for me. <laughs> no, well, it's, it's easy to, to knock once you've been there too. Much yeah. easier. It's, yeah. Here's what's crazy. LA is awesome. It's so cool. And it's also the shittiest place on earth. Yeah. It's bizarre. It's, a, it's this weird, weird thing. Yeah. I'd um, say New York just because of that, just because I've, I've never been there. I've been in New York and I, I liked it. <laughs> yeah. NYC is hard to beat. Yeah. The place is yeah. awesome. Well, I'll, I'll throw in one for you here. Miami or Orlando. Oh God, neither. (laughs) Okay. The traffic is awful. Listen, I don't know if it's the introvert, the the OCD. I don't even know what it is. I hate traffic. And so I try to avoid it with, I I schedule my stuff during the day based on traffic patterns. So when we, yeah, I, I don't know. I would say Orlando just because I'm closer and I have stuff to do Miami. I just feel like, um, You know, I don't want to say anything to offend anybody, so I'm just going to keep it nice. But (laughs) too much of a scene. Yeah, it's a it's a lot of drama. It's it's very um, very loud and in your face, and it's just a little bit much for me. (laughs) Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Baseball or football? Uh, baseball. My husband used to play baseball. Awesome. Yeah. Mountains or beach? Mountains, because I live at the beach. I would love. We're actually going to a cabin in the mountains. I'm so stoked for it. Ooh, where at? Uh, it's going to be up in Georgia and Blue Ridge. Okay. 
Yeah. Have you ever been to Jackson Hole? I have not. I have not. Our friends live in you Idaho and, and they've told us we need to go out there. So you do. And you need to go to the Wyoming side, like really? actually into Jackson, Wyoming yeah, on that side. All right. Um, I'll have to get that information from you for sure. The to do's and, and whatnot. Yeah. That, that's my favorite place on the planet. That's awesome. Yeah. Podcasts or vlogs? Podcasts. YouTube or Facebook live? YouTube for sure. Rich dad, poor dad, or millionaire real estate agent? Um, millionaire real estate agent. Okay. Uber or Lyft? Uber. Gary V or Grant Cardone? Oh God, I knew this question was coming. I listen to your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would say Grant Cardone. I'm not a fan of his cockiness, but you know, I would say Grant Cardone. Okay, cool. Yeah. And Megan, where can, where can the people find you and connect with you? My home away from home is Instagram. I am at FLA underscore coastal underscore living. Nice. Yep. Nice. Florida coastal living. So we'll put yep. that in the show notes. And if you're watching on YouTube, we'll put that in, in the description, the link to follow you, Megan, I really appreciate it. And it, it's cool to watch you grow, you know, just seeing, <laughs> seeing your confidence on video happen in such a short amount of time is awesome. Like, and that's what it is. It's confidence. You just Practice. got out of your yeah. own way. Yeah. You got out of your own way. You did it and something clicked for you and it's working. So yeah. congratulations. Thank you. It's cool appreciate to watch. It. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show, Megan. We'll talk to yeah. you soon. Thanks. All right, guys. I, I assume that a lot of you feel better about your strengths and weaknesses now. Okay. It's, there's a lot of agents that think because they're only consuming other agents on social and you see people doing videos on social as having these big personalities and being so outgoing and so charismatic. Well, it, you don't always have to be like that. Okay. You can turn it on when you're sitting in front of a client at their, at their dinner table, you know, going over the, the listing agreement. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent of the time. You don't need to be one of these people that's screaming and yelling and partying all the time, always, you know, needing to be around other people. You don't need to. So if you, if you need to use this episode as permission to succeed and to get out of your own way, great. Happy to give that to you. Not like you needed our permission to begin with, but if you feel you did use it, I mean, whatever works, whatever it takes, great stuff from Megan Riker today. Make sure you guys go follow her, her, um, her social handles are all in the show notes, whether you're, um, if you're watching on YouTube, it's in the description. If you're listening, whichever podcast player, just go into the show notes and there'll be some links there. And before you guys go, make sure that you, um, speaking of self-awareness, okay. S speaking of finding out what your strengths and weaknesses are, I'm amazed since, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm working with and coaching an agent, we look at their business, we look at their, their processes and their systems and, and how they do things. And I'm surprised there's usually a weak point. There's usually, uh, you know, the weak link a lot of times is the system that keeps track of all their, their contacts, all their closings, where the, the transactions are at in the process, all of that stuff. Cause a lot of times they don't have that, that they're just kind of like piecing it together. Or they rely on their transaction coordinator to manage the transaction, which is not a bad strategy. It's just not totally foolproof. You need, you need to know what's going on as well and have some sort of process for that. But I'm amazed at how many people have a CRM and they are using maybe 40% of what it can do. And then they're not, they're not even doing that consistently. And it's a huge weakness in the business. If you are using something you love, great. I'm telling you after, I don't know how many months that follow up boss has been a partner of ours and how many, how many months they've been sponsoring the show. And I have received I, every single week. I receive three to four, maybe five messages from you guys that are saying, "Hey, thank you for for mentioning Follow Up Boss. Thank you for providing the thirty day trial. Thank you for you know bringing it up over and over and over and over and over because it finally finally gets through. And once once you finally dive in and you're like, "Oh my God, this is what I've been missing." So a lot of you guys that are weak in those areas, please check out Follow Up Boss. Use the 30-day free trial that they're giving to you guys by being listeners of the show. All you have to do is go to massiveagentpodcast.com slash followupboss and no credit cards required. Just get the 30-day trial. That's it. I highly recommend it. You, you don't know how good a CRM system can be until you've tried Follow Up Boss. And you know the, the, the closed mind says no. The closed mind doesn't grow. So if that's you, cool. All right. I get it. You're busy, but take five minutes, go get the trial, 
log in there, poke around, and I think you may be surprised that this is this is one of those things that can move your business forward dramatically to reach the goals you set for yourself for this year. Thank you guys so much for listening. Really appreciate it. I will see you next week on episode 229. Have a great weekend. 